the original Shaft, a movie made in 1971 about a suave, urbane detective, was unleashed on audiences when black exploitation cinema was firing on all four cylinders. It was the kind of film that championed the cause of African-American civil rights during a time of great upheaval. And this credo found the perfect brand phase with star Richard Roundtree's New Yorker P.I. The popularity of the character among multi-ethnic cinema goers allowed for a true black franchise to be born. But later, as soul cinema of the 70s fell out of favor, John Shaft was put in a kind of suspended animation. Hi, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking for... Shaft? Mm-hmm. Who's asking? John Shaft Jr., your son. My son? But then in the first year of the new millennium, everyone's favorite soul brother had a revival with BAFTA-winning actor Samuel L. Jackson's portrayal of the iconic character. And now, almost 20 years later, Shaft is back. This time, the streetwise hero is teaming up with his estranged MIT graduate, cybersecurity worker son, to solve the mysterious death of a friend. Makers of the film say this latest write-out will take the series in a new direction. Totally fun, totally different. Uh, we've never done uh, this particular film as an action comedy, so it was uh, take some care to blend those things and make them work in the right way, uh, and hopefully we've done that. Boy, back in the day, we didn't need guns. All we needed was our bare knuckle. The original owner of the Shaft Mantle returns for a cameo role, a pleasant surprise for both fans of the franchise and veteran actor Richard Roundtree himself. Oh, hell no, I shot him. It's like riding a bike. Um, every couple of years, I think um, I'm done. <laughs> I get pulled back in. But at this point in life, I am so honored to be gainfully employed in this business. Back in the 1970s, Roundtree's shaft sent the message that you had to physically fight for your rights. In this latest incarnation, through Shaft's relationship with his college graduate son, the film provides a fresh reminder to the audiences that these days, education and not fists are the key to fighting for freedom and injustice. I need you. Watch my back. For more on the newest film in the Shaft franchise, here's Eric Eisenberg, the events editor at Cinema Blend. Thank you very much for joining us today, Eric. Now, rebooting, Thank you so much for having <laughs> on. rebooting any kind of franchise comes with a lot of responsibility to do the original justice. But this one in particular is facing quite a lot of scrutiny. Um, why is that? Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with tone. Uh, one thing that the Shaft franchise in general has been great at is telling these, like, kind of dark, but a little funny, uh, detective stories set in New York City, like dealing with uh, big, big issues like crime, corruption, race relations. And uh, this movie, for a reason that I'm still honestly trying to personally piece together, uh, decides to just be an all out comedy. And in doing so, it kind of just puts a lot of the classic elements of Shaft as a franchise kind of towards the back and just to highlight its own comedic style. And it frankly, I mean, to kind of just what, to go what you were saying, I mean, it doesn't super do justice to the franchise in that way. Well, I'm interested to get your sort of thoughts on and review of it in a, in a little bit. But I was sure. going to ask you, um, Samuel L. Jackson is one of the stars of this film. And he said that it's very, very different making this movie in 2019 compared to the, the original in the 70s. And um, why do you think that it, it's different? Uh, well, it is interesting uh, just because there's almost a certain comparison that can be made to Star Wars in the sense that, uh, like the original Star Wars back in 1977, uh, 
Shaft as a film really kind of came out of nowhere, directed by Gordon Parks. And uh, it was not only supremely popular when it was released in theaters, but it also really started a complete genre movement. Uh, it started what is now known as a uh, black exploitation film. It along uh, with Melvin Van Peebles, Melvin Van Peebles, Sweet Sweetback's uh, Badass Song. It really kind of revolutionized a certain brand of cinema. And of course, now, today, uh, when we hear that a new Shaft movie is coming along, it carries uh, all of the weight and kind of important historical context that comes with it. And yeah, for better or for worse. How would you say that black exploitation movies have changed since the 70s? Okay. Uh, well, that's an interesting idea just because, uh, I mean, when it came about in the 1970s, a lot of the reason why their popularity was so impressive was because it was feeding a certain audience that had not previously uh, been fed. And uh, obviously, diversity has a long, long way to go in Hollywood. But they have, uh, but movies have become more diverse, particularly in uh, recent years when it comes to bigger blockbusters. And so, uh, you know, like what's interesting is that with black exploitation, it's kind of become a certain kind of throwback aesthetic that a lot of movies have been going back to. Uh, just last year, we saw the movie Proud Mary with Taraji P. Henson. Uh, we saw a remake of Superfly. Neither of those movies did particularly well, uh, but there was also Spike Lee's uh, Black Klansman, which was very much made within that uh, kind of black exploitation oeuvre and uh, it was obviously not only tremendously successful but went, went on to win uh, an Academy Award so it's uh, it's definitely changed a lot since the early 70s when it was born but its spirit is most definitely still alive in the industry. So Eric I'm kind of getting the vibe from you that you weren't that impressed with this <laughs> new film can you tell me what critics have thought of it and, and your own personal opinions on the movie as well? Uh, you know, I've only talked to a few people who have seen it beyond me, but they do kind of, they do share uh, sentiments, which is to say that this movie really just blew a lot of opportunities that it had. And it's a bit, honestly, regressive in a lot of its themes. Like, uh, it weirdly had this whole conflict between the Je uh, Samuel Jackson character and the Jesse T. Usher character in that uh, he doesn't uh, the Samuel Jackson version, who obviously grew up during the set, grew up during the 70s, had his heyday then, uh, has a completely different view of masculinity that uh, modern millennials do, and uh, you know the way that it winds up taking on some of those themes is not all that great, and uh, I think that's going to cause some dings to uh, the ultimate critical opinion, even beyond just everything that I've mentioned so far. Right, thank you very much, Eric. A lot to think about there. Uh, Eric Eisenberg, no the events ed editor at Cinema Blend, thank you very much for joining us on Showcase today. Thank you for having me.